Hi, this is Everett, Everett's Watercolors. Welcome to my studio and uh, classroom today. Uh, this is Everett, Everett's Watercolors. Uh, what I'm going to do, uh, I got my uh, chat room on and say, Hello there. Hi, Raisin. Uh, good to see you today. You, uh, welcome from Houston. Uh, I'm, I'm broadcasting from Chesapeake, Virginia. And uh, I'm going to see you today with my wife, Gloria. Hello, everyone. And uh, she'll be monitoring the broadcast and also checking the chat room for me. Uh, if you have any comments or questions during the broadcast, uh, just uh, write them down on the uh, chat board and uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Okay. Uh, uh, today I'm going to do uh, something a little different. Uh, I'm going to work on the watercolor canvas. And uh, watercolor canvas is uh, very interesting. Uh, I do it a lot when I go on plein air. And uh, I'm going to do a little demonstration today. I did a demonstration. I did a demo uh, see, I did a plain air on canvas uh, last weekend, and uh, but I've got it set up here to do uh, something uh, similar to it uh, today in the studio. So uh, let me go over to my uh, let me go to my overhead uh, camera. Uh, this is the uh, reference photograph I have today. Uh, it's uh, along the waterway. I got some trees out here. And uh, got a nice blue sky. I'm going to paint in. I got these trees now. What I'm really going to capture here now. There's there's a path of light coming back here behind this. There's a group of trees here, and then behind that is another group of trees. But it's a nice path of light coming down here, uh, uh, back against the trees, and then across the water here. So that's what I really want to capture here today on the watercolor cap. Okay, uh, I did a uh, design drawing here of uh, my painting today, and I put that. This is on uh, my my sketch. Uh, pad and uh, also did a, a little uh, value study you can see here I got the, the light area back here the path of light going across the way here and uh, both of these uh, the uh, reference flag, uh, reference photograph and the design sketch are on my website and uh, on my website you go to everswatercolors.com and you can see there on the home page uh, from the watercolors is where you'll get a copy. You get a copy of the uh, photograph and a copy of the uh, drawing, and you can download those on your computer and you can paint along with me. And if you want to paint along, uh, you can go to uh, YouTube or we go to Facebook and go to my Facebook page, which is uh, uh, Everett's uh, Watercolors Art Group. Let me take you back to the uh, overhead camera again. Uh, I'm broadcasting on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitch. Okay, let me put this aside. Okay, so this is what I'm, I got the back side of the canvas. I've well, got this little, this is what it, it's a Frederick's Archival Watercolor Canvas Board is what I'm going to use. And you can see the size here. It's a, a 9 by 12, 9 by 12 inches. But that, that's, what, that's the, what it's called, Frederick's Archival Watercolor Canvas Board. Okay, and th this is available on my website, uh, everswatercolors.com, along with the uh, uh, paints and brushes and so forth, which I'll show you today. Now, uh, let me go over a couple of materials I'm used to. I got the Art, uh, Holbein's Artist Watercolor paints, which I'm going to use, and uh, brushes. I have uh, Holbein. Uh, this is the half-inch flat brush. Then I'm going to use uh, a half-inch three-quarter brush. And uh, also on the round brush, I've got a, a silver brush, uh, black velvet, number eight round, which is a nice uh, round brush. I'm going to use that today. And uh, what's John? Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay, very good. Uh, Ed. Your question was how, how does it react differently on watercolor, on watercolor paper, and so forth? Uh, well, what, I'll show you. That's what I'm going to demonstrate today. It, it works a little differently because uh, watercolor paper, it absorbs. You know, the, the paint that you, when you paint on paper, uh, the watercolor gets absorbed into the fiber of the paper. On watercolor canvas, it's covered with a uh, watercolor ground, and the, the actually the paint the paint and water actually floats on top of the canvas and it dries on top of the canvas, which makes it very easy to lift. And I'll demonstrate a little bit of that uh, as we go along. Uh, so what, what I'm gonna, when I go through the process, I'll show you how I use it. Now on this particular 
canvas board, what I've done is I've taken my sketch and uh, I used the watercolor pencils. These are also on my on my website. These are Kimberly watercolor pencils, and uh, I used the. Uh, uh, these are Kimberly watercolor. I got sets of 24 on my website. And I used the uh, blue uh, watercolor pencil to mark out my uh, design, and of course the the watercolor pencil will be uh, a. My, I'll be water, when I put water when I put watercolor on it'll it'll absorb the uh, watercolor pencil. So that's what I do when I when I want if I want to draw on canvas I'll use a, a watercolor pencil. All right now to get started uh, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna start with the sky and I'm gonna use the uh, three quarter flat brush and I'm gonna use uh, now in the in watercolor canvas. Uh, they come in different. They come in different sizes. I got here's a nine by twelve inch. They also come in. I got an eight by eight by ten size, and I have it all the way up to uh, eleven by fourteen size. And I also have the uh, stretch canvas, which is a larger size. So you have different sizes of canvases. Now I'm going to mix up a little bit. This is uh, I'm using uh, the light blue here, cerulean blue. I'm going to use that for the sky. Now. What I do here now, I'm gonna, I, I have I have water in the brush, but now I take a lot of water out. I just want to have a almost a dry brush, almost a dry brush, just moist, and then I'm gonna put. Uh, you'll see I've got very little water in the paint. I got I got plenty of pigment there, but I have very little very little water in the paint. So the secret here for the canvas is not to use a lot of don't use the same amount of water you would have. But what what would happen on the uh, on the canvas is that you'll see a bubbling up. Of the uh, solution, so I'm going to put this on. It goes across and it dries flat. You'll see it bubble up a little bit on, on the canvas, but as it dries, it dries flat. That's another thing about the, the canvas uh, material. So I'm using uh, the large brush and I'm, I'm putting on uh, the light blue here. Put it in the sky and I'm going around the going around the little trees up here. So using a big using a big brush stroke, getting the getting the sky color in with a cerulean blue. And the other thing about uh, canvas is that when the we what whatever color you put on there, it, it doesn't fade it doesn't fade as much as it does on paper because the paper is absorbing a lot of the color into the paper, and it dries lighter. On the on the watercolor canvas. It, uh, it doesn't it doesn't fade as much as it does on paper. In fact, it almost holds the same. So you can also control uh, the value of the color that you put on the paper. Now I'm going to go ahead now and go. I'm going to paint in the. Uh, now again, I'm going to load up the brush, and I use very little water. I use a, I, I pat the sponge quite often here to take a lot of water. I don't I don't I just want a moist brush. Just a moist brush with a lot of pigment in it. Okay, now I'm going down here and I'm going to paint the, I'm going to paint the water reflections from the sky. And so you're painting on. I'm painting the same brush strokes. Everything apply on canvas. Uh, it goes on very smoothly. And then use the brush to move it around. I can move a lot more. Uh, so on paper, I would probably not as use as many as many brush motions, but here because I want to get the paper, I want to get the paint spread. I'm moving the paint, and you can see here I can move it around, get a nice get a nice flow here. Uh, also, what will happen is when you put the first layer down, I'm just picking up just just moist paint now, just moist, very little water in the brush, very just a damp brush, and uh, put a little water in so I get to move it here a little bit. And uh, I'm coming across here, getting the sky color in. So I can go down here, and I'm going to let's see. I'm going to uh, move the brush across a few times. I want uh, when, when initially goes down on the uh, canvas, uh, just kind of spread it out. I'm just moving it. I'm not going to use nice long strokes. It's going to dry flat. And all the brush strokes go away. It won't. It won't. They won't show up on the on the canvas. You'll see the brush strokes as you go down and use the brush strokes on the canvas. You'll see the brush strokes there, 
but as it dries, it dries flat. What I mean by drying flat, it doesn't show brush strokes. So in order to get texture using brush strokes, you really have to use a lot of dry, use a lot of pigment and uh, uh, really, uh, now see I want to cover the area down here. Now I might pick up a little bit more, a little more pigment, a little thicker, because I want to get the top of the sky a little darker. Uh, so I just put this, I'm, I'm layering a little bit more pigment up here on the top of the sky to get the sky a little darker in the top and get it lighter as I come down. And I'm not going to put any clouds in the sky today. I'm just going to leave it, leave it, uh, the uh, reference photograph, it was a beautiful blue sky up there. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the sky. The sky is not, not the um, prominent, even though it's a large part of the painting, I'm not really going to put a lot of effort up there. So really, I'm just, it's a demonstration using the canvas is what I really want to do today. Now down here on the, now again, you'll notice I haven't, I haven't put any water on the brush at all. Just picking up pigment right out of the palette here. So it's, uh, the paint's very dry, very little water in the brush. Don't need a lot of water when you're using canvas. Uh, as I said before, that what happens, the paint, the paint is lying on top of the, on top of the uh, surface. It dries. This will dry very quickly. Okay, so there's the, there's the sky, there's the sky and there's the water down in reflection, okay? Now I'm going to go ahead now, I'm going to change the, uh, I'm going to change the brush. Let's see, I'm going to change brushes now, get the smaller brush. I'm going to use the uh, one half inch uh, flat Holbein brush. And I'm going to mix up a little bit of, uh, this is called the uh, green number one, which is a light green, very, li it's a yellow green is what it is. It's a light green. So I'm going to start out and I'm going to mix a, a pretty good sized puddle. Now you notice I haven't put, I'm not putting any more, I'm going to mix a little bit of yellow lemon in with that because I want it nice and yellow, I want to get a nice light color because I'm going to be painting uh, uh, the light area that's coming in from the sky and uh, this area up here is where the, this is, uh, this is the area that the sun is coming over here and it's hitting the top of these trees over here in the background and it's coming through when I finish the uh, section here you'll see I've got a it'll be a path of light I'm going to put through here so I'm going to put the light color down first this is the light color and uh, get it down here and I'm painting right over top of those uh, those pencil marks and they'll go away they'll be they'll be uh, the watercolor pencil marks will go away when I paint over them because the watercolor will be, uh, vac will be uh, liquefied and will, will match in with the paint. Now I'm going to go over here now. There's a little bit, of, there's another light area across the top of these trees over here on the left side. So I'm going to put a little bit of, a little bit of yellow lemon up here. So I'm putting these layer. I'm putting in the, the first layer of color. Establishing the first layer of color. So the first layer is uh, just putting down the color here, and you can see uh, that, that that blue mark I put down with the with the uh, colored pencil is being uh, I'm picking it right up with the uh, paintbrush, and it's it's being I'm blending it right in with the color so it, it it doesn't stay there. So the watercolor pencils are very good to work on watercolor because they can be used to mark the mark out your outlines, but then you, it'll go away as soon as you paint over it. So that's another little trick, another little trick you can use. Uh, okay, all right. Now, um, now I'm going to change. I'm going to add a little more. I'm going to add a little more uh, pigment now. Uh, add a little greener, a little darker green. So I'm going to use green number. This is a uh, Hooker's green. Over here in the right corner here, I got Hooker's green, which is a real dark green. And I'm going to mix some. I'll mix another color in with that, make it a little bit darker, and I'll use a little bit of. Uh... So I mix the colors the same way I would for uh, watercolor paper, except uh, very little. I'm going to have very little water in the brush, so I'll make a bit, nice big puddle of dark green.
that's the dark green mix right there and then I'm going to take the brush and I'm going to pat it out on the ta on a uh, sponge and make it to a dry brush then I'm going to go back now and I'm going to put in the the dark tree line now this is the second this is the darkest layer and I'm going to paint the outline of this uh, tree mass here So this is the this is uh, next color I'm using a little bit darker, a little bit darker, and it'll be here. I'm overlapping the with the light green, and it marries together very nice, blends very nicely. It's easy on watercolor canvas. It blends very nicely, and I'm going to have this little edge. The sun's coming through this section. This is just really the first layer, and I'll go back and add some more later on when I get down to the final application here okay now I have uh, there's a little bit of dark uh, it's not as dark over here it's kind of like a medium medium I just add take a little less uh, paint on this one but I'm going to paint an edge over here there's a, tr there's a little tree line bush in here. These are these are these are little low little low bushes along the edge of the waterway here. And there's some tar trees behind which have got the which are being hit by the sunlight. Now, uh, there's one section here. Now, see this? I'm going to take a tissue now. Take a tissue. Now, there's one section here I want to lighten up. So I take this here and I just push down on it, and right away I can lift that right out, just by that's how it's easy to lift because it's just sitting on top of the, just sitting on top of the canvas. So I just use a little bit. Of, I just use a tissue to do that. I go back and put a little, put a little more of this green in here. There's a little green tree here I want to put in. So I wipe that out with a tissue. And I'm going back in and repaint that section. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me go look at the uh, chat board to see. Uh, Oh, good. You have water. Oh, this is a question on not question, but watercolor pencils. Great. Uh, question is: What wash color is smooth on paper or more blotchy? Uh, no, it's it's not it's not a, it's not a blotchy point. It's uh it's smooth. It it uh, I'll bring it up real close. It it spreads out it spreads out very smoothly. I want to leave a little bit. I don't want to make a lot of uh, uh, tent, but you can make a if you go over again a couple times, it smooths out even more. But I will leave it a little bit. Uh, it's not blotchy, but it's got some got some uh, in, in, lights and dark sections in there, and that's okay. And uh, the thing about this, you can use the canvas over and over again. You can, uh, I've I've taken a painting and uh, painted on it, and I've gone back and painted over top of it. Uh, you can wipe it off with water, as long as you, as long as you haven't sealed it. Uh, what I do is when I'm finished with a painting, once it, before I frame it. I'll seal it with uh, with a uh, a fixative, an acrylic fixative, a spray bottle or a spray can, and that fixative will will fix the watercolor pigment on the canvas, and therefore it can be uh, framed, and uh, you can even wash it off if you need to, or wipe it off. But before that, uh, it's very very pliable. You can add. You can take the water. You can take the watercolor paint off, put it back on. You can change the colors. Uh, so it's very, very, uh, uh, very cooperative as far as using different techniques on it. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little more. I'm going to put that same color down here in the water. A little water reflection. So I'm kind of working on the painting now. So there's a reflection in the water. Put a little color down here in the waterway. So I'm just kind of putting in some of the color that's going to be on, in the painting. Uh, let's see. I've got another section over here. There's a section here which is a little bit lighter, and it's going to behind this tree here. So several several little groups of trees here. I'm going to try to paint in here. 
So I'm kind of blocking in, I'm, getting, I'm blocking in these uh, sections now, blocking in the colors. And that little color will be down here. I'm blocking in some of these colors just, just to get the painting started. So I'm blocking in just like I would on uh, watercolor paper, except uh, the canvas, I'm uh, just putting it on the canvas. So I'm using the same, you see the same process as I would if I was using it on paper. Uh, now down here I'm going to have a much darker mix because this this is the tree tree line that's uh, in the foreground. This is like the, uh, well it's actually the foreground, the foreground trees here. And this will be a lot darker. And I'm going to pick up a little more pigment, I'm going to pick up a little more blue, a little more ultramarine blue up here. I'm going to add that to that green mix, make it darker. And I come in here and I'm going to this is a reflect this is a tree mass and a reflection of the water. It's all dark, so I'm going to go ahead and put that in. So blocking in, I'm just putting the I'm just putting the paint down on the canvas, and I'll go back in and I'll kind of I'll adjust the value uh, on the second layer to make the areas darker, and, and I can lift out areas if it's too dark. I can lift them out, and make them lighter, if I have to. So right now I'm I'm just uh, plotting in the uh, the land masses, the tree line, reflection here coming into the water. And this this uh, light area doesn't show because I got I'll have a tree mass and most of the tree mass in front of this. Uh, so I got this one coming up here. Now what I'll do is. Uh, Behind this tree here is a little bit of, I'm going to put a little bit of yellow back here, a little bit of, uh, there's, there's this, uh, these background trees are in, the, in behind, so I'm going to put an indication here that there's a little bit of trees back here behind, uh, behind this forward area. So I'm going to indicate that also right there, make it. Okay, I'll let that dry a little bit. It doesn't take long for it to dry. It, it dries pretty quickly also. Uh, usually, uh, I'll let, let, when I get a layer down, I'll let it sit for a while, let it dry. And uh, usually it takes about, to make it totally dry, it takes about 10 minutes, 10 or 15 minutes. But uh, because I put very little uh, water in the paintbrush, uh, it, it's easy to go back in and make, put a darker layer right on top. All right, now I'm going to start uh, forming uh, the painting. Now I've got the. I'm going to go ahead and put in some more, a little more detail here. Uh, these are some trees. These are part of the tree here, tree mass here that's showing showing off here in this section here, which overlaps. And there's a there's a tree here that grows up. And it's going to overlap. Uh, these are actually uh, these are actually pine trees. Pine trees in this little inland mass here in front of this background. So I'm going to put those in. So I'm just again just indicating, just getting uh, kind of blocking in where I think they should be. So these are these are the trees that are overlapping the background. They're forward. These are the forward trees here on this little little section here. Okay. 
All right. <clears throat> and then uh, these trees actually have a reflection, and I'm going to indicate those also. There's a little reflection here in the water. So this one here will come down. This tree here will come down and reflect into the water. That was the most interesting part of this painting. Was I, I was fascinated over the reflections also. I always like to find a uh, an area that's got a lights and darks like right in here. Then I, got, I like a reflection area, which is what this has. Uh, so I'll go ahead and block in some of the shapes here. These are little shadow patterns or little reflection patterns from the trees. If you take a look, uh, this is a, a reference photograph. You say, yeah, I'm putting these trees down here in the bottom of water here. So I've got these trees here reflecting into the water. You can see how dark that is. So I'll be getting a little bit darker in the painting as I go along. But I'm blocking in the shapes right now uh, and getting the location and the sh positioning and so forth. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead now, I'm going to put another layer in here, and I'm going to get a little bit darker now. <clears throat> and I'm going to leave the, I'm going to keep, I'll use a smaller, this is the half inch, half inch uh, flat. Now I'm going to add a little more, a little darker color. So I'm going to take, put, put more blue now into that green. So I'm using Hooker's Green mixed with Ultramarine Deep Blue. Give me a nice dark, a nice dark green. Okay, I'm going to go in now and put in put in a, a second another second layer. And this is really going to be dark now. I want them nice and dark, nice contrast. And I might leave some of the color I put down and let it show through a little bit to give me a little variety. So these were the trees that were in the background. These were in shadow. This section was in shadow. There was a bunch of trees here. Some shadows and some were in the light. These area, this tree area here was in shadow. I get a nice dark mix. You see the second layer now. I got a lot. I got a lot more pigment. In it. Not very, very little. Very little water in the in the brush. Very little. Now you can see. Uh, uh, by putting another layer on this, it gets much darker right away. And now I'm just using brush strokes now to get a little shape here. Bring this right on down to the shoreline here. There's a little bit of... There's a the little water's coming behind this little section. There's like a little island out here, a little section of land that's popping out. And uh, so it shows uh, just a little bit in the foreground, a little bit forward. And this section here, I'm going to mix up a lot more now. I'm going to pick up a little bit more. Uh, mixing up more of that uh, green number. Let's see, Coker's Green mixed in with that Ultramarine Blue. And go in here now and make this much darker. This is all in shadow down here, so I'm going to put this in shadow. So I'm layering over the, the first uh, application I have. Adding in now. This is in, now. This is also reflecting here. This is also reflecting in the water. There's part. There's part reflection here. This is reflecting. This is part water because this island only it stays about right here. So this is all reflection from up there. So it's going to be a rough, be a little rough edge here. Reflection in the water. Indicate that by just doing some, uh, uh, doing some er erratic brush strokes. Ragged brush strokes. Look, make it look like a. Reflection in the water, rough edge. So these these uh, the water water's not moving too much, but there's still a little little reflection in the water because of the uh, shimmer. And bring this one up here. This is all all dark because it's in shadow. Even though it's a uh, you got there's got part of this coming into the, the reflection, but there's also a shadow coming from these trees and so forth here. This is a large uh, area of 
small trees and bushes and I'm just going to block those in as a large as a large color nothing you can't you can't tell them individually because they're all just all lumped together all one all one all one color mass and that kind of simplifies that section simplifies the painting also you only put enough detail in there to tell the story. That's all you have to do. You don't have to put, you don't have to, you don't have to paint every little item that you see. You want to paint those areas that tell the story. Okay. Now I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. I'm going to use the, uh, uh, silver brush round number eight round. I'm going to use that same dark paint now. I'm going to pick, mix up some more of that hooker's green mixed in with the ultramarine deep. Then I'm going to come in here now and put in some uh, some smaller little tree branches here that are over overhanging a little bit. And these trees here were, as like I say, these were uh, small evergreen trees. I'll show, I'll show some indication of the tree trunk. That's why I'm using the uh, smaller brush. So I can put in the, the tree trunk shape. Then uh, I'll put in the shape of the, the branches and so forth to give them a little, a little more interest here. And there'll be a little bit of that uh, light green showing through because they're the background trees will show through just a little bit, but not, not too much. Uh, not too much of it, but just a hint there that there was some background trees behind this row of trees here. So I'll leave I'll leave some little tree holes between the branches to indicate some of that. This tree had a little more had a rounded uh, rounded top to it. Overlap this tree a little bit. Okay. All right. Then I'm going to work on down here. Get uh, pick up some of that. Uh, this tree here was a reflection in the water, so I'm going to pick up some of these shapes here now there were as I say the trunks and the trunks on the trees get those shapes in a little bit pick those up using the round brush with a sharp point see it comes to a nice sharp point number eight number eight round it's a nice brush this is natural hair also this rest the, the flat brushes were uh, synthetic brushes but this is a this is a natural hair uh, Called black velvet. I use this is I use this on. I actually painted. I use this brush on the plain air uh, painting I did, and uh, I'll show that one. I'll show that one uh, after I finish this. I'll show what I did in plain air just as a, an example uh, of what I did uh, on location to uh, to practice the shapes and the colors and uh, get ready for the demonstration. But um, I'm really demonstrating the uh, the use of uh, canvas. I think canvas is uh, very interesting to use. It makes it makes it beautiful marks. It's easy to it's easy easy to put paint on and take off. It's easy to change the color. And once you get it on, you can just spray it with a fixative. Uh, there's there's a, several fixatives out there you can buy. There's a, several brands.
a paint fixative and uh, you spray that and then it becomes a, a, an acrylic spray and it makes it permanent and you can put a mat around it and you're finished uh, that's the other thing about it it's uh it's easy to mat once you get it done we'll talk about that in a few uh, after i finish here i'm gonna make this a little bit darker back here it's not as dark as the it's almost as dark it's like a middle value back here so i'm gonna make this a little bit darker this section here and uh, the reflection was a little bit darker reflection in the water Uh, let's see. I want to. I think I'll take a. Just a little bit. I'm going to make. I don't. This is too. Uh, I'm going to put some. A little bit of uh, brushwork here just to show there were some trees. These trees now they had little shadows in them and so forth, but this was mainly a light area. Just to put a little bit of texture back there in the. In that tree line, okay? And uh, this area back here. Uh, there was a small, there was a light tree, light tree here on, on this section here, small one. And uh, what I want to do is see, let me see. Uh, again, I'll, let me demonstrate this. I covered up this app here, so I'll take, just take a damp brush. I'll take the number round, we'll just damp brush and I can wipe this off right here this section right here put a little water on it and then take a tissue and just blot it and it takes it right up okay and then I can take that reflection now and put that into the water because there's a reflection here of this little green tree here up on the back so so I removed these saw there a demonstration where I removed some of the paint that I had painted down I just just blotted it up a little bit of water, very little water in the brush, then blotted it up with a tissue. So that shows that little little demonstration there of uh, of that part there. Okay, and uh, let's see. I think I'll take a little more of that yellow, little yellow green, and I'll put that along the top here as a reflection. Reflection of the water from the background trees. Reflection here. Now I still got this white area. This this is really the sun shining through here. And uh, I really want to leave that white. So what I'll do is I'm going to take some of this blue. Some of the cerulean blue with the uh, round brush and I'm just going to put the uh, indication here that there was uh, uh, the light was shining through here in this area And uh, what I want to do now, let's see this part here, yeah. I think I'll bring this one down just a little bit. I'll take a little more of that. So now I'm going back down. I'm just doing a few final touches uh, to finish it up now. I'm going to bring this up just a little bit higher. I'm going to bring this up just a little bit higher. The edge of this, the edge of the shadow here. Do you have a preferred type of fixative? There's uh, several brands out there, fixative. Uh, question? Several types? Golden has one. Uh, Golden has one. There's also okay. You go go to the art store and you can find a fixative for uh, uh, it's an acrylic spray. You can use any kind of fixative on it. You go to a paint store and you you have uh, 
a plastic or acrylic spray that covers in a spray can and uh, that's all you need to spray it. Okay. You do one light pass, then turn it and go the other way. Let it dry, then you go back and do a second layer, just very light, a very light coat of uh, of the spray. You don't put a lot in there. Okay, now just uh, I'm just going to play around. I just do a little bit of touch up here and there. I'm going to let it dry just a second here, and uh, I think I'll pick up the uh, flat brush again. Nah. There's very little, uh, there's very little preparation on the canvas. You can just 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 paint on it, and as you put the layers on, it will, it'll add to the, uh, the, the surface of the of the canvas. Sometimes you'll see a little bubble on it, and if you go back with another brush brush stroke, uh, it'll it'll blend very nicely, and uh, you can put several layers. Let it dry. Put another layer on. Oh, that's the other thing. If once you once you do a layer, you want to let it completely dry before you put the second layer on, because otherwise it will pick up. It'll pick up the layer below. So you paint you paint the layer, let it dry, then put the second layer on. Like back here, I can put another layer on top of this one now. And uh, if I rub too hard though with a damp brush, it starts to pick it up. So you just have to work work with it a little bit. And uh, as I've done, I'm just doing some fine tuning here. And uh, some of these brush strokes now I can also add a little bit of texture to uh, the amount. I can make some lights and dark areas just by brushing over it a little bit with a brush. And uh, I want this area a little bit darker here in a reflection. This section here. This section up here. No, I didn't. I didn't have to do that. Okay, and uh, okay. So I'm gonna gonna finish up fussing with this a little bit now. Let me see. I'll just pat over here. I think what I'll do here is I'm gonna just take this brush. And I'm just gonna kind of phase this one out here. I just I want the I want the uh, uh, I want the reflection to stop. I want the light like to stop about right here. I don't want to go any further with that. So what I'll do uh, is just kind of blend that out. I, want, I don't want anything to go out off the side here, so I'm kind of cutting off the end of the painting right here around this tree. And I can put some brush strokes in here. Again, I'm just putting, a, what I'm doing, going back in with just a little bit of paint on the brush, just a little bit, and I'm just touching the canvas. And by touching it, I give me, it gives me a little bit of texture, just a little bit of texture showing a little bit of, a uh, little bit of shape there showing that this is just not flat. It's got a little bit of uh, shape to it because there are trees back there, uh, uh, tr leaves and so forth on there. So just by touching the canvas, it'll add the paint to that and it, it'll blend out very smoothly. And uh, let's see, I might want to put a little bit more, might put a little more yellow on this tree here just to indicate, indicate the the sun's hitting this. This tree is uh, sticking up, so it makes us a little bit lighter here, a little bit, a little bit brighter, just a little bit. Gives me a little bit, of, a little more yellow on that section, and then I'll pick up a little bit of uh, color, a little bit of green on it, and go put a darker section over here, kind of make it like look a light and dark section. Give that tree a little shape back there. Again, I'm just fine-tuning a couple little places at the bottle. Okay. Uh, as far as a reflection, I can go in here and darken up some of these areas. These little tree trunks, I can go in and make a little more. Just, just another little, little darkening here, because they are dark. Okay. Then up in the tree itself, I can go in there and do a little darkening in there. Just a little fine tuning, okay. Okay, well that that was really uh, the taking taking uh, eliminated. There was a lot of detail back in here, which it was 
construction going on and, and parts and so forth. I just eliminated it. I just got the trees, the light coming through, light the light coming through behind the, the trees here, uh, make them light and then a darker foreground with a reflection in the water. And that's all I wanted to capture. Okay. So that that's the part of the demonstration here. You can see here I used the. Uh, I went in with the uh, light brush strokes on the on the sky. Uh, let that dry, then I added in the dark, the dark, uh, the light green first, the light green background. And then I put the dark. I put several layers on here. You can see here as the layers go on, they're going to dry. They're still wet. You can see they're still wet on there. Okay, and it, it's easy to lift. Uh, If I wanted to show a tree trunk in here, for example, uh, I can take this and just take a damp brush and I took all the water out of it and I can go in here and just lift, I can lift this out just by putting the brush on there. And you can see there I lifted that, I lifted that, I lifted that section out right there just by rush, a damp brush and let that dry, okay? Or, and, I, and if I don't like that, I let it dry, I go back in and cover back over again. So, you know, it's very, very easy to use. It's a lot <coughs> it's things you can't do on paper in most cases because the paper, the paper is, absorbs the paint and it'll, it'll uh, the paint will collect into the paper fiber. And uh, you can lift some of it, but some of it will stay on there. Here, you can lift it off completely. I've, take, I've taken a complete canvas and taken all the paint off and start over again. Okay. That's the one thing you can start off, you can wipe it off and start over again. That's the other advantage of using canvas. So that that's one. Let me uh, let me put a mat around that. Uh, now, the other advantage of this is once it's done, this is like a nine by twelve format. You, you you can mount it just the way it is, and you can put a mount on the back of it and hang it right up on the wall. Just and once you put the spray on it to fix uh, that way, it seals the uh, watercolor. Or you can put a, a frame around it and and hang the frame up just the way it is. You don't need glass. You don't need anything else in front of it like you would on, on paper. So this uh, just puts a little, a little bit. I'll put just a little bit of uh, frame around it. And uh, that's not actually the colors I would use, but that gives you an idea of what it looked like on a frame. Okay. And you can sign it down somewhere down in here. Okay. Uh, now before before we stop here, let me show you. Here's one now. Here's here's one I did. This is a uh, it's eight by ten size. Here's the difference now. This is uh, nine by twelve, a little bit bigger. This is eight by ten, uh, and I did. This is what I did over the weekend. I did a small one over here, okay. And uh, this is the one I did plain air. I did actually on location. And I, I could right now it's dry. I could go back in. And I could add to it. I could add color on top of that. make these a little darker so as long as I haven't sprayed this uh, I can go back in and make I can edit it I edit as, as many times as I want to okay I can add more pigment in here make it darker so a watercolor canvas uh, like this uh, is easy to paint on and easy to use and it's very portable okay Uh, there's the finished painting I did today, a demonstration, and uh, appreciate all of you. Uh, okay, questions I had was, uh, yes, canvas is a little bit different from paper, but uh, once you get used to it, it's very easy to use. It just paint across, let it dry, and put the second layer on, okay? And it, it's th the paint will dry on top, so you can be easy, easy to take off. You can also take it off and start over again. Uh, mm. Okay, so let's go back to the main camera. Take you back to the main camera. Okay, well that concludes today's demonstration on the watercolor canvas. And uh, uh, I've used canvas quite a bit, and and I've used I've done a lot of canvas paintings, and I uh, really have enjoyed doing that. So today's session was to uh, show you the Fred, uh, Frederick's uh, archival canvas. Uh, these have to be canvas boards, and. Uh, it turned out to be a very good, a very good painting. I don't know if I got several here. There's this one there with the barn. Uh, yeah, this one. Now let me show you this one. This one over here. I'm pointing right at right now. That's that's a canvas right there. With the with the barn, 
uh, with a frame on it. I got a gold frame around that one, okay? No, I don't like that. <laughs> okay, I'll be back again next Thursday at uh, 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And uh, we'll, uh, you can pass on the... Share, share this video with your friends if they haven't seen canvases before or they're interested in them. I think it would be an interesting topic to show and demonstrate. Uh, and just go and get yourself some. I, I've got these canvas, I got canvas boards uh, on my website. And I'll be on later on this evening at 7.30 on simply, paint, uh, simply drawing with Everett. And uh, I'm going to do a simple drawing exercise this afternoon at uh, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay, so uh, I'll see you all next week and uh, at 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time here at uh, Doing Watercolor. So until then, uh, happy painting. Hope you try the canvas and give me a question if you still have after the broadcast. That's fine. Just put it down in the comments section. And the links to my all my uh, uh, home, uh, all my uh, Facebook and to my uh, website will be uh, on the description of the video today. So, we'll see you next week.